in my goal um, is to um, deliver the same message as my teacher gives. It is the Indian um, discourse he teaches, and that is called Satsang. Satsang means intimate truth sessions. I'm going to do it in a way my friends would understand. Because some of the stuff is based on ancient teaching, Veda, and that is called the uh, physics of the universe, how to operate, and then the Agamas for the principles, applied science of these Vedas. So we did a workshop, two day workshop called Attract Fortune. And um, many of my friends missed it. And they also asked me to tell it to them in a way they would understand. And I'm going to share it with my teacher. Hopefully, he'll bless this for me so I can do this in the future. The reason is sometimes when I don't attend this workshop, I feel so lost. I feel like it's like missing my own family. Okay, So sometimes when that happens to me, I understand the importance of sharing because sometimes when you share, what you learned in the workshop, even though you didn't first and attend it, it feels so nice to know that you kind of got a concept of what was shared. So they started the sessions. Uh, I'm going to describe it in a way that made sense to me. Um, I uh, work with Sri Yantras, and it looked like he was doing an entra, and the entra, I always wear my entra t shirt. So if you see the entras, right, the Sri entra has total nine uh, triangles. One or four of them would be in one direction, five of them in the another direction. The middle triangle determines the potency of the uh, triangle. I didn't know this. This is a secret. But I made one T-shirt, and the uh, priest there said, "Why do you have five triangles?" And I said, "What?" How do you know? And so he said to me, this is a secret for Sri Yantra. See, like the middle one. Whatever the middle one is, the direction of the element. So if it is pointing up the triangle, that's fire element. When it's pointing down, it is water element. So when Swamiji started the workshop, I was watching. So he pulled in the energy, he goes through the left. And then he brought it in and he, he took it out and he delivered the first blessing and that is the water element and then he also did receiving and then he sent it back and then giving uh, i mean this is receiving and this is yeah this is receiving and this is giving him so he received and then he sent back and same way he accepted the offering and he sent it back okay so that's the way he started the session and I'm going to do it in this way, that way, like, you know, people will understand because I perceive him as a clairvoyant. I connected him in another way with my heart. But at the same time, for the physical beings, I'm also telling it in a way they would understand. So the first discourse, when we started, they did a replay of his previous attract fortune and where he says there is only one thing you need to know is not to have hidden agenda. He used a word called no cunning strategy but actually it translates to do not have your own hidden agenda when you're doing um, manifesting wellness wellness because in the long run it has to come from the intention of your um, doing the right thing and automatically will will follow this is like hidden message okay and then he opened it with a dhyana mantra so dhyana mantra is called the, the one he used this time was a different one than all the ones he have used before. So I love whenever he changes his Dhyana Mantra because the Dhyana Mantra is the space where you attain the Bhava. Bhava means like you go into the essence of what you want to teach. So this time he used both this Divine Father and Divine Mother. So uh, he used Om Nityanandeshwara Maha Sada Shiva Sabharamba. Nityanandeshwara Parameshwari Adi Shakti Madhyamam Asmatacharya Parayantam Vande Guru Param Varam. This is the first time I have seen him use Parameshwari. 
which is the mother, divine mother, and also the forceful form, like the active force behind Shiva's form. So that was very interesting. And then he started saying, Fortune has physics, which is, he says, in the end, he recaptured it as three aspects of fortune, physics, chemistry, and biology. The physics is Yaga. Yaga is a determination with integrity to do what is right. Chemistry is craving. He says the essence of wealth is either being so fortunate that you are given tremendous wealth, so you need to create that happiness, which is which is creating your wings that you can create your your sky, or sadness, which builds the root and depth, so you can grow from that and create the richness. Biology is the depth layer rebuilt in prayer. And when you are initiated by the teacher, he is like the seed that lets you burst open your unmanifested potential. He called it avyakta to create fortune to fortunate. You create not only fortune, you also become fortunate. And so he went over, do not equate currency to fortune, understand first what is fortune and liberate the limitation of consciousness. He says, do not possess, own, that is, you freely share what you have. Make sure nobody is able to destroy the space in us. See, fortune is not created by wealth, inheritance, or um, like, you know, what others pass down to us, but instead, think fortune as like a secret, which is by definition, ability, maintain determination in spite of complications and complexity of life, but forever break down any barriers so you create your wealth. The definition of determination he says is chastity to our own chastity to our own consciousness, meaning to be purely um, aligned with our consciousness, the highest potential in us. Source keeps expanding, have the ability to stand strong with the determination is Tyaga. And he says when you exhale, let go, you have bigger inhalation. Same way when you do not hold and let go, automatically God puts us uh, with beautiful gifts. Tyaga, when we do it with this determination and like pure intention of doing the right thing, he says many birds of us would be reset. Our past lives and future births. And determination stand with integrity, with conscious decision and conscious conclusions is fortunate or fortune creation. Even amid complexity and complications, these ideas of society, that determination, so breaking through the idea of society and staying strong, that determination is Tyaga. Tyaga actually in India can be connoted as sacrifice but he says instead of using that word sacrifice do it as determination to break down barriers so stand up with tyaga he is fortunate mahadeva he says like uh, sadashiva who is the ultimate source would himself be committed to people who stand up with tyaga consciousness and everything else in wealth is silly conversation he says it's like um, he gave few examples Mood swings about fortune, that is like feeling good when you have money and feeling bad when you don't have money, he says it's immaturity. He says stay strong and like, you know, use that space when you have self-doubts and like, you know, sadness to break up some internal limitation. And when you are feeling super overflowing with happiness to build the more resolution inside. So he says that would make us more stronger in that too. Determination is like roots that break down long cherished thought currents versus which the thorns are like person and situations that attract miserable mood swings. Dropping these thought currents of thorn like state is Tiaga. Physics of fortune is renouncing the idea of wealth as Tiaga. Stand with determination is not born by ideas of Maya metrics because the Lakshmi who is embodiment of wealth it has first a layer of illusion and only by unlearning what we have learned fortunately given. And he was mentioning Vishnu laying in a snake bed. 
he is in a state of owning, not possessing. That's why wealth is at a, a great cause Lakshmi. Own enriched support creates the state and space. My body is Adina. My body is home of God. Fortune business is a spiritual business. Happy state make more commitments with oneself. Sad, in sad state, break up more commitments we made to ourselves in the past. Chemistry is when sad creates roots, death. Happiness creates wings in the sky. For sadness, use prayer. When things get tough, the tough gets going. So in conclusion, he says, surround our being with musical prayer. Fill the thoughts which will create the wealth consciousness. Wealth consciousness. Prayer is worshipping everything that is unknown, including our avyakta state, which is unmanifested potential inside. I'm talking too fast only because I want to wrap it up quicker today to see whether I can get it blessed by my teacher. And if he does agree with this type of recapping what he said, I would do further. And if I do not get his permission, I'm not planning to do this anymore. Allowing delusions to continue and making money is destitute state. And he said Shiva has five heads versus Subramanya has six heads. The extra space is the avyakta space, which is shown only to yogis in worshipping faith. Chemistry of prayer is worshipping avyakta faith of Sadashiva without fear in reverence. That is, praying without having fear and in reverence creates the unmanifested state in us to blossom. Silly imagination of future is fear. This is similar to silly fights people have in Indian villages near their water spouts. So then he goes into biology of uh, fortune creation, which is action is where muscles are torn, kitchen is where muscles are fed, sleep is where muscles are built. So similarly, biology of consciousness is state of joy where conscious muscles are torn, cherished thoughts is where consciousness muscles are fed, depth is where consciousness muscles are rebuilt. And in depth, in inside, deep inside, is the place that's replaced with prayers. So initiated biology, that is when a teacher initiates us, which is my teacher, Sri Nityananda Swami, he's His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda, that seed will grow fortune to fortunate. So initiation purifies the biology because we would have a limited understanding of fortune. When the teacher initiates us, we can even see bigger potential which we didn't even anticipate. So when he said he initiates with fire to our water body. So he says after initiation to drink a lot of water. And water is the internal circulation to circulate these uh, blessing fires. Air is external circulation to circulate these blessings. Fire is circulation of consciousness. So to paraphrase it, like if you we are wealthy, the wealth is going to spill over. I mean, that's the way I think. Like when we are rich, there is no way we are going to um, not enrich our community. We'll be using more resources. We'll have more vendors. We'll be supplying. So it's the same way. Like the minute we are wealthy, the people surrounding us, our family are going to be wealthy. So in conclusion, he said, start actions today. A person who starts never fails. Whereas a person who fails never starts. And he says the knowledge, the wealth of knowledge will push a fortune which will blossom into power manifestation. So Saraswati, who is the goddess of knowledge, will push Lakshmi, who is the goddess of fortune, which will blossom as Durga, Shakti, the power inside us. And these female goddesses exist in male and female. So it's not gender dependent. Anything that stops actions or complexity and complications which can be overcome by action. So whatever you want to get done even starting by doing one thing towards the goal is important every day start actions today you will be successful and so he says he will he will uh, create a blessing to create fortune from any actions that we start from today and he always finishes with let us all radiate with integrity authenticity responsibility enriching happiness with dark white asylum the eternal bliss, Nithyan and the Mahasadashi go on, be blissful. So the thing that happened to me personally was I was not able to uh, attend a track fortune workshop because it was held only on 
to repenters and by some miracle, right? I was praying and he did the first webinar. It's called Nityananda Kriya Yoga. It's a five day webinar, which was $250. And he also did Nityananda Gyan Yoga, which is $100 workshop. And, and I really want to support him because he, he works tremendously hard on himself and he has a huge um, set of kids he's training. So I feel in whatever way I can contribute to his cause, I would love to. So I signed up for the webinar and I didn't have any intention except for like, you know, to supporting this cause. And the Nitin and the Kriya Yoga, we finished at the middle of the night because we were, oh, I signed up for the overnight course. And then in the morning, they were saying, oh, we are going to go to the Attract Fortune workshop. We'll come and gather again. So I asked the, the eldest uh, saint there, her name is Maniana Mananda, uh, would you allow us to join? And she gave us the uh, ability to do the webinar right from our home. And I felt, to me, everything that tremendously I wished for at that one point, like, you know, came right into my lap i didn't even have to leave anything because i was i felt like i was doing all the right things that i needed to do god watched out for me so my teacher blessed me with beautiful fortune and i felt immediately i know how sad i felt not attending his workshop and i felt the least i could do was share my notes with everybody so i diligently took notes i posted it on all the global sangha and I shared it with um, all my friends and I feel so blessed and that's the reason I'm doing this video because if it ever ever happens that somebody is not able to attend his uh, conferences I have made a commitment to myself that I will do this and I'll be committed to posting whatever he teaches and this is a huge blessing again.